Welcome to this lesson. High level managed services are services where AWS is taking on some of the management of the underlying infrastructure. So things like Amazon RDS, we've seen this throughout the course and obviously it's a big benefit of the cloud. So I just wanted to go into a little bit more detail about the benefits. So a high level managed service is a service like Amazon RDS, the relational database service. In this case, you're having a managed operating system and database. So you don't have to manage the operating system anymore. The database is provided to you. So that means you're ready to start loading data into the database. You don't have to patch the database or the operating system. All of that kind of maintenance is taken care of for you. Backup is taken care of for you as well. You can configure schedules for when it happens, but all of the actual implementation of the backup is handled automatically for you. So that's a lot of time freed up. Amazon S3 is a storage service that's fully managed. So that means the entire service is managed for you. All you do is upload your data. Now you can also apply encryption through settings and options that are provided to you, a feature of the service. You can copy it to different places, different regions even. And you can also configure the bucket permissions. So who can access the buckets and the objects themselves. So all of that functionality is offered to you, ready to use. You just need to configure your security settings and your access settings and those kind of things. And then we have AWS Lambda. Again, fully managed compute. So underlying AWS Lambda are Amazon EC2 instances. Your code is running on an operating system. It's running on a piece of hardware underneath the operating system. But the point is you don't manage any of that. So for you as a business, it means that your guys are not running the infrastructure. They're purely concentrating on the code that they put on the service that's offered to them. So the key benefits are freeing up your staff to focus on value add activities. So we talked about total cost of ownership analysis in a previous section. Now, one of the things that's really hard to quantify is what is the value of the work that the employee does. So if you took away all the mundane activities that they have to do as part of their day-to-day -day work and you freed them up so that they could spend all their time working at what they're best at, then what would the value be to your business? And that can be difficult to understand because most of the organizations around the world have staff who are doing things that perhaps they shouldn't be doing, but it's just part of their day-to-day -day work. It's considered normal. But imagine if you free your developers up so that they can concentrate purely on development. They don't have to worry about infrastructure. They don't have to worry about the processes and the approvals and speaking to people about getting new infrastructure. It's all just available to them automatically. That makes a big difference and the end up value to your business can be really huge over the longer term. And you're going to reduce costs as well. So you might be able to free up your staff for more value add activities, bringing more differentiation to your business whilst also lowering your operational costs as well. Managed services also help to minimize downtime. So all of those updates that are happening, you've got to remember that AWS are doing a lot of work behind the scenes to prepare those updates to make sure that those updates don't bring down your systems. They have a lot of customers on AWS. If they make mistakes, it becomes very high profile very quickly. So they do everything they can to try and minimize those types of issues. Now, doing that in your own enterprise is ho hopefully something that you are doing, but it is very challenging to do it to the level that a company like AWS is. So because of that and because of the types of services and the availability options and the fault tolerance that's built into those services, it really means that you can minimize the downtime for your applications. Lastly, we have efficiency and security. So efficiency comes back again to freeing up your staff, reducing operational costs, but it's also using tools like automation, tools that are available to you in the cloud so you can really change your business processes, release your applications faster. And security, security is a big one. We're gonna talk about it in the next lesson. Security is something that a lot of people think is a concern in the cloud, and it is, it's a concern everywhere. But you can be extremely secure in the cloud. You can also be extremely insecure if you don't configure things properly. But the underlying platform itself is built with very high security, and the features for security are there. So as long as you use them correctly, you can be extremely secure in the cloud as well. 
The last thing I wanted to talk about is something called AWS Managed Services. So if you're a organization that's moving into AWS, and perhaps it's just a too big a thing to try and learn how to manage and operate in the cloud, you can leverage AWS Managed Services. So they will perform lots of the operational management of your infrastructure on AWS for you. Now you still got to manage your own applications and your own code, but they're going to manage a lot of the infrastructure. So they're going to do things like provisioning, monitoring, patching, availability and security and so on. So this can definitely reduce the complexity of moving into the cloud, especially when you're training up your resources, reskilling, hiring and so on. And again, it's another layer of outsourcing. It's another layer of taking some of this responsibility off of your staff so they can concentrate on more value add activities. So I hope that's useful and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.